Smash Summit 6 was last weekend, and although I've already made a video covering the bracket and recapping it, I wanted to make a second video here detailing some of the key questions that I've seen brought up in Summit's aftermath regarding the current number one player, MKLeo. Is MKLeo still the best in the world? What the heck is up with the Meta Knight? Is Leo's Summit curse real or just a John? Today we'll explore MKLeo's time at Smash Summit 6 in order to answer this key question. We'll go over the easy topic first, the Meta Knight. This weekend, MKLeo decided to put the MK back in MKLeo and play Meta Knight. Leo said a while back on Twitter that he was going to be picking up a new character, which would replace his Aegis, that he said would cover his bad matchups that he hadn't really wanted to play. Now, when we think about Joker, who is the character Leo primarily used at Summit, his only bad matchup is really Pikachu, but Pichu was also a concern for Leo, especially as Natoru was present at Summit. Look, I know now that he was going Meta Knight in hindsight, but back when this happened, I really thought Leia was going to pick up Mr. Game & Watch. I mean, think about it, all the pieces were in place. Game & Watch is like one of the only two matchups that Pikachu hard loses, and Leo probably hasn't wanted to play him. And now that Leo is on Luminosity, he has Meister on his team as a dedicated partner who could show him literally everything he'd ever need to know about Game & Watch at the top level of play. I mean, I know I was biased as a Game Watch player myself, but tell me it didn't make a ton of sense. Anyways, Leo's character pool for Summit was three sets he played as Joker, two sets he played as Byleth, and two sets he played as Meta Knight. One of these sets, versus Aaron, Leo went Meta Knight and Joker, so keep that in mind too. What I think is kind of funny is that Leo went Byleth against two people, Hungrybox and Akula. You literally couldn't pick two polar opposite people for those two sets. It definitely has something to do with matchups, with Byleth likely having a really good matchup on Puff, and I think Leo is at least very comfortable in the Steve Byleth matchup, if it isn't just altogether better for Byleth. With Eren, Leo went 2-0 with Joker, and then switched to Meta Knight, likely wanting some practice with his new pocket and feeling very confident against Eren in Game 3, who he proceeded to two-stock with the Masked Round Boy. Only time will tell whether or not this Meta Knight will grow into a further menace, but for the record, the Meta Knight did win every single game in the singles bracket that it was brought out, so, you know. Oh, and by the way, I checked Leo vs. Spargo and Squad Strike Grands to see if the Meta Knight was brought out there. Turns out, Leo and Spargo decided to play all random the entire set, and Leo got Game & Watch in random. I'm just saying, Fate wants him to play Game & Watch. Okay, okay, I'll shut up. Before we move on, I would like to note that Leo's Meta Knight was present for every other set of squads before Grands, and Leo didn't go Joker or Byleth once in squads, instead focusing on a combination of secondaries including Meta Knight, Rob, Aegis, Corrin, and even Marth. After watching all the sets back, I definitely think the Meta Knight tore up Leo's opponents more than any other character he used, except debatably Aegis. The pessimists may say that it's just a matchup inexperience, or Leo's new mid-tier cheese, but I personally think this Meta Knight has true potential, and watching Leo pilot that character was almost hypnotizing. Now for the second half of the video. So is it just me, or did it feel like all the top players did really poorly this summit? I mean, Tweak is kind of the outlier here, getting second place, but for the rest of the big three of NA, they started in losers and stayed there. I think there are a few important factors to look at before we go to Twitter and claim that any of the top players are washed. Firstly, we saw both Leo and Spargo in grands of squads, so they're both clearly not completely washed up. That means there was something in the singles bracket itself that affected their placement. I would argue the two biggest factors on the placements of our top two in the world comes down to the nature of Summit and the upsets that were rampant throughout the bracket. Summit by nature is a tournament with a high concentration of top level talent designed to bring in the best of the best and Hungrybox. Joking, joking, I had to, I'm sorry, I had to. And I have a question to everybody in the crowd, who likes Hungrybox? I think the fact that Leo had to go up against top level talent all weekend likely drained them far faster than a breeze through the hundreds of participants at a major. As backwards as that may seem, I don't think it's some curse that causes Leo, or even this time, Spargo and even Gluttony to do poorly. I think it's just the fact that Summit is kind of like someone telling you to climb my Everest, and the only practice you're allowed to do is walking upstairs. The other factor I believe is important is the upsets within the bracket. Now, Leo getting 9th is a pretty crazy result, pretty disappointing for him, but he lost to Akala, the person who won for ninth, 
If Big D didn't beat Aqua in winners, forcing Leo to fight him early, imagine how differently the bracket could have gone. If Leo had beaten Big D, a likely result given Byleth's big sword, he would have had to fight Gluttony, who did beat him in groups, but in a Game 5 last stock set. I think Leo could have pulled out the plot armor for that set, and if he had beaten Gluttony? I could see Leo beating both Proto and Karama, making it to at least Loser's Finals, where he'd likely either fight Tweak or Aqua. Now, whether or not Leo wins at that point, I don't think it's likely that Leo would have beaten Akula, and as much as Tweak and Leo have gone back and forth, recent times have been more Tweak dominant, so I'd be inclined to say that Leo probably wouldn't have won there either. And that's even assuming he'd get to Losers Finals. After all, Proto has beaten Leo the last two times they've fought, and while I would have faith that Leo could pull out the plot armor for that one, many others would not share that belief. So no, I don't think Leo is washed. I do think he struggles at summits because summits lack that ramp up period that you'd get from a normal big tournament, and because Leo had some extraordinary bad luck to fight Akula in losers round 2. The last thing I'll say on this before we move on is the idea that Leo is not the best player in the world anymore. Honestly, when we look at the here and now, I think I agree with you. I think likely Spargo and especially Tweak have a good shot at that title, with Akula of course making a strong case for himself being the best this weekend. Although, with a global Steve ban looking more and more likely by the day, it's uncertain if that would still hold true under those circumstances. However, just because Leo might not be the best right now, doesn't mean he's washed. Leo has had slumps before, and we've seen him come back from them every single time. Think of Collision 2022, for example. I kind of feel a little bad for Leo. He's not allowed to have a slump or underperform at a single tournament without the entirety of Smash Twitter jumping on the washed bandwagon. Leo might not be the best right now, but I think overall Leo is the best Smash Ultimate player overall, and I have a strong feeling that he will be back in full force once he gets over the current slump in his play, however he may do that. That's it for the video today. If you've enjoyed, please leave a comment down below on whether or not you think Leo is still the GOAT or not. Also, consider following my Twitch, where I play Smash Brothers very regularly. I've been Mr. Mice, and thank you all very much for watching.